Hey everybody, this is Vic Moss with DroneU, and um, I'm going to be doing a photography review of the Mavic Air 2. Um, this is actually my second uh, recording of the intro because when I did my original intro, um, I didn't realize how deep I would be going into the actual files from the Mavic Air 2. Um, it's uh, my photography geek side kind of took over and I went a little deep. So the video itself is actually going to be 35 minutes long and um, I didn't want to put anybody through that just so they could hear my conclusion. So my conclusion will be first here. But what we're going to do is I'm going to take all three of these, I'm going to put them up, I'm going to shoot this in RAW, this in RAW, and obviously the Mini can't shoot RAW. Um, I'm hoping for an upgrade someday. Um, but it sh it sh it'll shoot JPEG. So what I'll do is I'll press process all of them out uh, in a 16-bit TIFF at full size without any... Um, you know, I'm not going to do any manipulation of the JPEG in this, in this, in this particular instance of the, uh, of the, of the RAWs in those two. And then I'll compare them side by side. And I ended up shooting in three different lighting situations. Uh, very flat light, nice bright light, and then some dusk stuff. I uh, got the dusk photographs just before the uh, end of twilight, as you'll notice in the video. But I wanted to give you my conclusion now. And then if you want to, you can... There's a bird just landed on top of my camera. You can... Um, go ahead and skip the rest of it. But I am going to go deep. So if you're really into this kind of stuff, um, we'll go deep into each one of those lighting scenarios. My conclusion is I'm actually not keeping this drone, but not for the reason you think. Um, when I have a drone, I need to make sure that uh, it's, it's up and it's making me money. If I'm flying for fun, it's either one of my little FPV Emaxes or this little guy right here. Just having fun, because this is a fun drone to fly. Um, and it takes decent video and decent photos. So, you know, worst case scenario, I've got that. It's nice and compact, so I just want to throw it in something. This is not that much smaller than the, than the Mavic 2 Pro. So as far as the compactness, this doesn't fit my, fit my needs. But I like it. If I didn't have this, or if I'm just getting started, I would buy this drone in a heartbeat. Uh, the 12 megapixel half-inch sensor is a great, great sensor. Um, I'm not sure how much longer the 12 me uh, megapixel is going to be viable in the commercial market, but for the lower-end stuff, real estate, small gigs, um, you know, the low-end gigs, that kind of thing for your mom-and-pop type things that you're going to be working with, or just recreationally to have a lot of fun and take some nice photographs, that's going to be a good little bird for you. Um, so th it, it, the files themselves are nice. They're sharp um, in the 12 megapixel and uh, the sharp edge to edge, which surprised me since it is a fixed focus or fixed focal length of 2.8. But um, it's a good little drone. And if you're looking to get into it, if you're looking to upgrade from this or uh, from a Spark or from a lower end um, other brand uh, drone, you're going to be hard pressed to get something like this for for a thousand dollars with all the stuff that comes with the fly more kit so i i suggest if you're looking um definitely put this on your list of things to get or things to look at before you make the decision and um, i really think for the money it's really hard to beat this particular drone right now and uh, that's my conclusion for the 12 megapixel the 48 megapixel if you're looking to buy this drone because it has a 48 megapixel sensor, it doesn't. It's got the filter. It's got the quad bear filter system, which I'm not going to get into. You're, you're, there's plenty of people out there talking about that. Um, in certain circumstances, um, the daylight stuff, it's, it's a nice file. And, it, and nice is how I'm going to, you know, that's about, that's about what I think I'm going to go with. And uh, in flat light situations, it is not a good file to work with. I think it needs the contrast uh, to really make it pop the way I would like to make it pop. Um, and believe it or not, at night when I shot this thing at dusk, it was surprisingly good in the 48 megapixel. There's some things I didn't like about it, um, but it's, 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 it's not a 48 megapixel drone. If you're going to buy this because it's a 48 megapixel drone, you're not going to be happy. If you're going to buy this as a 12 megapixel drone with that puts out nice imagery, the video I'm not going to worry about. Um, I know for a fact that Haya from Drone XL is doing a video on the video. He's doing a review of the, of the Mavic Air 2 video, so um, we'll have a link below uh, on that once it's up. But um, if you're buying it as a 12 megapixel camera that has the 48 megapixel option, which is a good product, eh, product's not the right word, a good, it produces a good image in, in many situations, then you're going to be happy with this. Uh, it just kind of gives you a little bit extra stuff. Um, and if, if you're into post-processing like I am with the, with the raw files, then I think you're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, the auto exposure bracketing, AEB, 
on the 12 megapixel. Um, I did not test, but it's, you know, it's this is gonna be the same as this, this doesn't offer it. Uh, and so I'm not gonna test that, but if you're gonna do that with the, J, or with the um, 12 megapixel automatic, if you're gonna do it with the 48 megapixel, it's not automatic, you have to manually change the exposure between each image. And the buffer is so slow, which I also get into, that by the time you're going to do five shots with the 48 megapixel, the, the drone has moved a lot. So um, you need to make sure that you're clicking the appropriate boxes if you're going to use an HDR program. So anyway, that's my thoughts. Not only the, the, the introduction, but also the conclusion. Um, so let's dig, di uh, dig deep into it and look at the different files from all three different drones in all three different lighting situations. So you have my conclusion. If you want to hang out and listen to what I have to say about it, uh, I'll talk to you again at the end of the video. So, here you go. Well, in uh, typical Colorado fashion, um, it clouded over this afternoon, so that's okay because we're still going to do the Mini, the Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Pro 2, um, and Mavic 2 Pro, sorry. And sometimes we just have to shoot in situations like this, so let's go ahead and see how both of them look. So for the actual imagery here, um, comparing you know image to image, like I mentioned, everything's processed out of 16-bit TIFF, even the Mavic Mini. The first thing I'll do is I want to pull up the 12, meg uh, 12 megapixel, so the standard size image for the Mavic Air 2, and the um, Mavic 2 Pro standard image. So we'll pull both of those up, open those up, we'll compare them. Because that's what a lot of people are asking. It's like, how does it compare to the Mavic 2 Pro? Um, first of all, the Mavic Air obviously is half the cost, and it's got a one half inch sensor versus a um, one inch sensor. So two totally different things, but I said I would compare them. Um, people have asked me. Uh, I don't think it's a fair comparison, <laughs> um, but it's still a decent comparison to do. So here you've got um, the uh, Mavic. Go ahead and pull this up. That's the Mavic Air at 100%, and that's the Mavic 2 Pro. I'm sorry, not 100%, but at, uh, at full screen. Um, both of these together. So you can see, first of all, the Mavic 2 has a wider view, wider angle, wider angle. Um, at least it's a wider, um, it's, it's, a, it's a different um, ratio. Um, if you look at it, I mean, it's really kind of hard to tell which is wider, um, just simply because they weren't in the exact same spot, but it's pretty close as far as angle of view, I think is fine. But uh, this, is a, this is more of a standard format, and this is uh, the 4.3 format. Uh, on the Mavic Air 2, which is fine. I mean, that's no big deal. You can crop. You always want to use the, 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 the full extent of the sensor anyway. So let's go ahead and go up to 100% on both of these. And um, what I want to do here is, if you, if you notice right here, and this is a green mountain again, and right now there's a, um, um, there is a antenna right there. So let's pull that up, and we'll pull this one up also to 100%. Um, kind of put them both in the middle. And this isn't necessarily a super fair comparison, but it's pretty close. So right here is the antenna. That's the Mavic 2 Pro. And then there's the antenna, and that's the Mavic Air 2. You can still see it. It's not bad. You have some nice contrast. Um, for a 12 megapixel sensor, this is a very nice sensor. Um, I will give it that 100%. Um, so let's go ahead and go 200% on both of these. You normally don't compare it 200%, but I figured we might as well. And let's look at some of the brickwork on the school here. And you can see it's starting to get a little muddy, but again, this is 12 megapixel versus um, 20 megapixel and one inch versus one half inch. So this is the uh, Mavic Air 2, right in through here. The brick works a little muddy, and here it's not quite as muddy, so that's kind of nice. The only other thing I'll do is I'm gonna go back here and look at these vehicles and see um, if there's any difference here. And there's, you know, again, as far as the sharpness goes, I think this the Mavic Air 2 um, is, a, is, a, is a fine, it's just a 12 megapixel image and it's fine for what it does. I have no problem with it at all. Um, so then let's go to the 12 megapixel, I'm sorry, the 48 megapixel. And that guy is right here. And the closest real comparison I wanted to do with this was me processing out the Mavic 2 Pro image um, at 125%. So we'll open that guy up too. And that is right here. And this we're just gonna go straight to 100% because um, I think that's the best way to compare it. Uh, let's go back here again. We'll pull up the, um, the antenna. So the antenna is right here. And then I'll pull it down here, right here. Now again, this is not a true 48 megapixel sensor. You've got that quad bear system in there um, that basically divides the pixels by quarter. I mean, that's, if you want to dig into that, dig into that. Um, I'm not going to really get too technical on that aspect of it. Um, but 
when you do that, you're not getting a true 48 megapixel sensor. As I mentioned, if you had a 48 megapixel sensor, either on a, in a full inch or, or, or the medium format sensors, um, it would there'd be no comparison, absolutely none whatsoever. But even in here, um, with the half inch at 48 versus a one inch at roughly 25 megapixel, just simply because we did process under 25%, you can still see that the Mavic 2 Pro is so much sharper. It's smaller, but it's sharper through here. Um, again, through here, you can start to see some noise. And this is at 100 ISO, you're starting to see some noise in the sky, and you're not really here. So it doesn't even compare to 125% for the Mavic 2 Pro to the, Mav to the 48 megapixel. It's just a much better image um, at the, with the Mavic 2 Pro, but I expected as much. Um, another way to really look at that is let's pull these houses up here. Um, if my neighbors see this, it's going to be kind of funny. It's like, hey, that's my house. Because um, maybe I shot this yesterday, like yesterday evening. So look look here. Again, Mavic, 2, Mavic Air 2, 48 megapixel. If you look at the roofs here, um, the, 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 the shingles are just not great um, at, at all. And, and here, they're actually much, much better. And look at this yard right here, too, especially. Um, it's, it's still a little muddy because it's, you know, 125%, but it's not bad. I think for the vast majority of people out there, this would be perfectly acceptable. But here, it really muddies up. Uh, muddies up right here, starts to get a little soft. All the grass starts to get a little soft. So, is this a 48 megapixel sensor? Uh, at this light, no, absolutely not. Um, it falls apart pretty quickly at low light situations, but that's indicative, or that, that's, that's pretty standard with this particular um, quad bear system. Same thing with your, a lot of your phones have quad bears as well, um, either sensor or filter, uh, depending on how you look at it. Um, and the same thing, it's just, it's, it's, I don't want to use the word gimmick, um, but it is sort of gimmicky. Um, if you're tight on something, like let's say when you use this for roof inspection, I think you're probably pushing the envelope. Unless you're doing something like here, you know, a few years ago here in Denver, we had a massive hailstorm um, and just destroyed a bunch of roofs and houses and all kinds of stuff. And it was obvious. I mean, you could throw, you know, put your iPhone in the air and see how bad it is. Um, so a situation like that. But if you're looking at really critical um, inspections, I'm not sure this really works. Um, if you want to enlarge it, if you want to shoot it and enlarge it and put something on your wall, yeah, I think this would work very well. Uh, but in lower light situations, in this flat light situation from uh, yesterday afternoon, this this isn't, um, I don't think this is really going to be the great uh, image maker that, um, that some people think it would be. Um, for the commercial world, I don't think the 48 megapixel option um, in, the, uh, in the Mavic Air 2 is really that big of a deal. Um, but again, for an $800 drone, I guess it's really not that bad. Um, it just, I don't think this is really having a commercial, a commercially viable option uh, for the 48 megapixel. Uh, 12 megapixel, I'm still, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's what it looks like in flat light. So let's go from there um, and let's go ahead and move into the uh, stuff I shot this morning uh, before the clouds moved in again. Um, and um, Let's take a look at that and see how it performs in a little bit brighter situation and go from there. So here we have a nice beautiful day out here at one of the parks in Lakewood to uh, test the daylight capabilities of the three current Mavics uh, in the lineup. So we'll get that going right now. Um, again, we're going to do the same thing. We shot, we, you know, I put it up as you noticed, I put it up and um, shot it and brought it back down and did all three um, and then processed them out in 16-bit TIFFs in Capture One without playing with the files. It's straight from the camera. Exposure was determined straight from the um, uh, from the histogram. And again, I'm not changing the histogram to um, to compensate for the um, for the vignette on the Mavic Air 2. So that's not going to be that big a deal. So let's pull up again the Mavic Air 2 or the Mavic Pro 2 image, and then the Mavic Air 2 uh, regular image, which is right there. And let's compare those. Now, while this is opening, I will say, I was surprised how well the Mavic Air 2 um, did today. Uh, it actually does put out a very nice image for daylight, and in 12 megapixel, it's supposed to. Um, but I was kind of surprised how well it worked. So here is the uh, Mavic Air 2, and this is the Mavic to Pro image, and again, you, it, you know, it's not too bad. It's got more contrast, uh, but again, that's that's fixable in in post. That's not that big a deal. Uh, but it's it's actually very nice. It's it, nice color rendition. There's the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, it's over sharpened. It's oversaturated, but that's 
pretty common with a consumer level drone. Um, it just you know makes it makes the photograph look nicer for the most part. Um, someone who's who's a professional, um, who's as anal as I am about imagery, uh, would I find this a little objectionable? But I don't find it so objectionable. I wouldn't buy the image because I can play with it in post. Um, so let's go ahead and go 100% again, um, and we'll pull up uh, downtown. And this is in the Mavic 2 Pro. I'll pull up downtown here as well. And let's go ahead and try and get them about in the same spot so when I bounce back and forth. So obviously, as you can see, the Mavic 2 Pro 20 megapixel, one inch is going to be sharper. Um, it's going to be uh, a wider image, um, closer. I mean, it's also going to bring the, uh, um, when I go up to 100%, it's going to bring things in a little bit closer. Uh, Mavic Air 2, Mavic 2 Pro, uh, it's flatter, as I mentioned. It's not over sharpened, whereas here, it is slightly over sharpened. It's, it's, for many, 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 actually the vast, vast, vast majority of people out there, this would not be an issue. But if I go to 100, if I go to 200% on both of these, I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Let's start with this one, the Mavic 2 Pro. I mean, we still have some nice gradation. This is not sharpened, by the way. I have not sharpened this at all. So it might look slightly soft, but that's because I have not sharpened it. Sharpening is the last thing I do. Um, and it's not done in camera the way I have it set up. So. Um, it looks like it's a little soft, but again, it's at 200% and it's not sharpened, so that's why. But if we go to the Mavic Air 2, this is still at 200%, but if you'll notice, it's very sharp edges. Um, and that is, although it really doesn't look bad for most people, that is a sign of over sharpening. Um, so it does over sharpen a, um, not only the JPEG, but the RAW. There's some settings in there that does slightly over sharpen uh, the, the, uh, the RAW imagery as well. So you can, you can, un you can, you can soften it up and, um, and, and post and things like that. But that is one of the biggest uh, differences between the Mavic Air 2 um, regular file and the Mavic 2 Pro. Uh, again, the Mavic Air 2 right here. It's a nice image. It's slightly, oh, it's slightly dark around the edges, um, but that's that vignetting issue. Uh, that is is that just is there. It's just how it is. Most cameras do have it, but most cameras have the profile built in um, in the post-production stage. And the JPEG obviously does uh, in the non-post-production stage in the camera. So that's that one. Uh, let's go to the next one. I want to pull up the Mavic Air 2. And this one I do want to show. So the Mavic Air 2, that's the standard side, and the Mavic Mini right below it. Um, it's kind of a fun comparison here. Here is the uh, Mavic Air 2 and the Mavic Mini. This is surprisingly not a bad shot. Um, well, it's not a bad image. Um, it's kind of a boring shot, but it's not a bad image for a you know the Mavic you know, $400 drone or whatever it is, um, and especially JPEG and then processed out at TIFF. Um, so let's go ahead and pull up 100% on both of them. And let's go here to the um, to the playground on these because I found that kind of the most interesting on this. Here's the Mavic Mini. Um, you do have some pretty nice detail in here. It's still sharpened, uh, over sharpened, but again, that's the JPEG, and I didn't want to do anything with it in the um, in the TIFF. And here it is um, in the Mavic Air 2. These are very similar quality images. Um, again, slightly lighter. Let's not worry about that part of it, but just look at the sharpness of it. Um, it's just a nice image overall. You're a little muddied up in the Mavic Air 2, but again, that's that's processing JPEG back out into TIFF, so that's why it's doing that. Um, and then in here, it's it's nice and sharp. It is very sharp for the um, imagery that it is. Now let's go to the the Denver skyline in both of these. And that's also a really good way to tell what's going on. Again, as we mentioned, you saw, just saw this when I had the uh, Mavic 2 Pro in, but um, this is the sharpness on the Mavic Air 2, and here it is in the Mavic Mini. Uh, surprising little bird on both aspects of it. So that works real well. Now, here is what is um, interesting, and in, when I process these out, this kind of surprised me a little bit. So here is the map. We're going to open up the Mavic 2 Pro at 125%, again, so it's processed out 25% larger than actual. And then we're going to go to the, um, the Mavic Air 2 at 42 megapixels and bring them both up to 100%. Go right away into 100%. There's our skyline again. Pull the skyline up. Okay, so here's the Mavic 2 Pro to 125%, right here. And here is the um, 48 megapixel Mavic Air 2. In a brighter situation like this morning, 
the 48, the 42 megapixel system, the bear, the bear, uh, quad bear system works so much better than low light, which we knew it was going to happen. Uh, anybody who's familiar with the quad bear system know that low light is not, it's, it's actually, it's kind of, it's an emesis. So it's going to be interesting. Um, if I can get out tonight or tomorrow morning when I shoot the, the uh, dawn or dusk stuff. But anyway, um, it looks pretty nice in the 42 megapixel image. So let's pull this up here. You know, the sign, you know, I don't think I have the sign in the, um, I don't quite, but that's okay. So the Mavic Air, or the Mavic 2 Pro at 20, 125%. So let's look at the playground here. Here it is, um, again, unsharpened, so it's slightly soft compared to the Mavic Air 2. Um, 48 megapixel. So at 48 megapixel, bright imagery. This actually is is a nice little little uh, little file. Very surprising in this. Um, I didn't. I knew it was going to be better than the flat light, and I knew it was going to be better. Well, I'm assuming it's going to be better than the uh, dusk or dawn stuff I shoot tonight or tomorrow morning. But in the 48 megapixel, nice bright daylight stuff. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Um, would this be? commercially viable in daylight hours. Yeah, I think so. Uh, you're not gonna go shoot Ford trucks with it um, like we did with the, with the in, in Inspires a couple years ago. That was kind of fun. But um, real estate, um, developers, uh, even some of the lower end um, small advertising type jobs, this is an option. One thing you can't do with a 48 megapixel, 42, I don't know why I keep saying 48, 42 megapixel um, quad bear on the Mavic Air 2 is shoot AEB. AEB is only available in um, the 12 megapixel files. So if you want to shoot AEB on this, you have to do it manually, which is easily done. You just, you, you push it and you change your exposure. You can actually go full stop instead of two thirds like they do on the, uh, um, the rest of the DJI equipment. But in the meantime, the drone does move a little bit, so when you're doing your uh, when you're doing your HDR imagery, um, you need to make sure you're um, clicking that auto align button uh, and stuff like that. And if you saw my last review um, with the images that uh, Haya um, Castellu from Drone XL sent me, you saw I had to do that as well. So you can look that up. There'll be a link to that um, below as well. Um, I don't want to repeat that. But again, um, full daylight. Uh, Really, really, really nicely surprised with the 42 megapixel output of the Mavic Air 2 on that quad bear system. Uh, very nice, actually. I'm very surprised. So, um, alrighty, so that, that takes care of this. We went into both of them. We showed the, I showed you how to shoot it. And um, what we'll do now is we're going to go ahead and go back out. Um, maybe today, probably not. Uh, weather forecast is showing for rain. And um, so it might be tomorrow morning. But either way, we'll get some of those dawn or dusk shots. Not going to do night because um, I don't want it. The Mavic Mini is not that great at night, and I don't think this is going to be the Mavic Air 2 is going to be that good at night, so I don't really want to waste the time. But you know, that nice blue hour dusk stuff I think is going to be pretty critical to show uh, just how well it works. So there you have it for the daylight. So it looks like everything's going to work for tonight. Um, we're going to be able to get the uh, Mavic Air, the Mavic, the Mavic Air 2, the Mavic Mini, and the Mavic 2 Pro up uh, to get some night shots. Uh, not night, because um, I'm not going to run this under my 107.29. Uh, sunset's at 8.15. I'd like to get all of this stuff done right around 8.30, so that gives me plenty of time to get up, get the shot, get back down. Uh, a couple things differently we're going to do here is I'm going to do auto white balance on the Mini and on the um, Mavic Air 2. And I'm also going to shoot a 400 ISO, because I, um, I don't think 100 ISO is going to be fair, uh, in all honesty, to the uh, Mavic Air 2. Um, so that's what we're going to do. It's uh, sunsets almost behind us there. It's getting almost down. So about 15 minutes or so um, We'll go ahead and put everything up and uh, Get them stuff done tonight. So keep your fingers crossed the wind doesn't come up too much It looks like it's going to calm down here really nicely and um, we'll get some nice shots and be able to compare what that 48 megapixel quad bear sensor filter thing um, How well it works in really low light uh, obviously we found out in flat light. It's not so hot um, I'm not expecting much out of this, so if it comes out good at all um, with that 48 uh, megapixel file, I'm going to be pretty happy, but um, not expecting much. So here we go. Landing. Awesome. What time is it? It is Good moving. 8.43, two minutes to spare. Awesome. All right. Let's talk about how things went last night. Um, as I mentioned in... Um, both in the video you just saw and um, 
just the back of my mind really since I first heard about this, I heard about what uh, the 48 megapixel uh, quad bear system they have in it. I had low expectations um, from my video or from the uh, for the stills from last night and um, I was pleasantly surprised. Um, but before we get into that, let's get into this. Okay, let's, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time because um, we have, you know, I've talked a lot about different aspects of each each part we've shot, but I just want to really spend um, some time on comparing just the low light shots. Uh, now what you have here, let's start with this one. This is the Mavic Mini um, and um, it's, you know, not bad. Uh, I'm going to say not bad because uh, that's pretty much what it is. Um, considering uh, what the drone is, I, actually I think I'd probably go a lot better than not bad, but it does fall apart in the sky. You get an awful lot of, um, of noise with that, which, you know, for, for, for the Mavic Mini it's to be expected. Um, let's move over to the Mavic Air 2. If you notice, you've still got the vignette in here, which I'm going to talk about here in a bit, how to get rid of that very easily. But I'm going to say I'm very, very, very shocked um, at just how well the half-inch sensor on this thing really works. Um, I had low expectations for the 12 megapixel. Yeah, I had medium expectations for the 12 megapixel. Let's just go with that. Um, and was surprised. If you look uh, in the sky, which is where you're usually going to get noise, the noise isn't here. Um, and this is, remember, this is at 400 ISO. I expected really a whole lot of noise. I expected blown out highlights. Um, they are a little bit. And you got these people down here social distancing at Dairy Queen just outside the church where I shot. Kind of funny. Um, but it, this is at quarter second exposure and it is pretty darn sharp. Um, there's absolutely zero movement in it. A little bit of glowing uh, in the reds, but that's not uncommon with the drones. Um, you can turn down that channel if you want in post-production. Um, and the other issue, obviously, with the Mavic Mini is it shoots JPEG only. This is from a RAW. <coughs> Excuse me. So, the, it, I'm surprised. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, we're not going to dig too deep into it because, like I said, you know, the Mini's here. JPEG to TIFF. Um, you're just going to get that noise. We can close that out. And here's the Mavic Air 2 at 12 megapixel. What I do want to show this, I want to show the Mavic uh, Pro 2 when I processed out at 125. I already described why I do that and how I do that. Um, plus the Mavic Air 2 at 48 megapixel. We're going to open both of these. Um, and this is the Mavic 2 Pro. Again, a little bit darker. Uh, it's just the nature of the beast. Um, and again, you do have a little bit of the red um, glowing around here. You know, the target sign back here, the Walgreens back here, the Hobby Lobby back there. The red just kind of blo uh, blooms a little bit, I guess is a good way to put that. And some people say it that way. And in the Mavic Air 2 48 megapixel, it is much more pronounced. Um, so let's do, let's do 100% on both again. Um, whoops. This is the, um, which one is this? That's the Mavic 2 Pro. So again, you've got the red ballooning there, you've got the red ballooning there at Staples, KeyBank, all the stuff is really ballooning out a little bit on the red, which again, you can turn down in a channel in post-production. These are processed straight out of the camera. No, no nothing. I just went process and capture one called happy. Let's look at what happens with the 48 megapixel. This is where it falls apart. Um, You've got a very soft, noisy sky. I know that sounds kind of weird, but that's just kind of how it is. Um, in this particular thing, you really don't have good detail in the clouds, and you do have a lot of noise. To be expected. This is not necessarily a surprise. Definitely not a complaint. Well, it is a complaint, but it's not a complaint considering the cost of the drone. Um, but what is a complaint is look what happened to the reds. Remember how the, the reds the reds over here were all were very red, but they were also very bloomy, for lack of a better word. Um, but here, the reds are gone. They're just gone, um, at least back in here. And that either is or isn't objectionable. I think it is slightly objectionable because it's not that true. Um, here's your people again, social distancing at Dairy Queen. Um, this image, this file as processed out of camera is a surprise to me. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sugar, I'm not going to lie about it, obviously. Um, I'm very pleased with what the 48 megapixel system can do. Um, not nah, 48 megapixel filter, for lack of a better word. Um, that's this technical aspect anyway. So it just, 
I'm very surprised by it at low light. Now, I don't know if I shot at 800 or 1600, or I think 3200, I think it'll go to 64, I can't remember. I'm sure it'll fall completely apart after 800. Um, but I thought it would at, eight, at 400 too. So, um, you know, you can take that for what it's worth. Um, if you want to, if you have one, test it, you know, let me know below in the comments. Um, but I'm just very, very, very surprised um, by that. Very happy with that. Uh, is it, again, the, um, the commercially viable 48 megapixel drone. Yes, with caveats. <laughs> um, if you're looking to buy this as a 48 megapixel drone because it is a 48 megapixel drone, you will be sorely disappointed. Um, if you buy this as a 12 megapixel drone with the 48 megapixel possibilities that come with it, then you won't be disappointed at all. I do like this as a 12 megapixel drone. It is a commercially viable 12 megapixel drone. And surprisingly enough, at least with my testing, um, the 12 megapixel darker image, remember we shot the flat light first, then bright, and then dark. The darker image on the 12 megapixel is a better image than the 12 megapixel in flat light. Now, I don't know if that's the contrast situation um, or what, and maybe it would require a little more testing, which honestly, I'm not gonna keep the drone, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Getting too deep into it, I'll play with it a little bit longer before I get rid of it, but um, I just, it's, it's a good little drone. I would definitely say, if you're looking at beginner drone, if you're looking at a backup, hmm, I don't want to say backup to Mavic uh, 2 Pro because it's not a backup to a Mavic 2 Pro. It's not the drone. It's not the same drone. It's not designed to be the same drone. But if you're flying a Mavic Air, if you're flying a Mavic 1, um, if you're flying uh, a Spark or Mini, I mean, those don't really count. But if, you, if you've got one of those, you're having fun with it, you say, hey, what's next? And you don't want to drop $2,100 on a Fly More kit on a, on a uh, Mavic 2 Pro. Get this guy. You know, 1000 bucks for a Fly More kit. Um, I really think you're going to have a lot of fun with it. It flies incredibly well. It flies incredibly um, quietly. I was amazed how much it, how quiet it was. Um, again, no side sensors, but for people like me, we turn the sensors off anyway. Um, it was driving me nuts when I was testing last night and the beeps were going off. Um, but I didn't want to turn them off because I didn't want to do anything uh, with the drone. I just wanted to fly it out of the box. Um, no, nothing changes in it. So the only other thing I wanted to do real quick um, is we talked about... Um, the distortion and the vignette that is in the raw files of the Mavic Air 2. Um, but I said it's easy to fix, and it really is easy to fix. So this is where I wanted to show you um, how this goes. I've, I've opened it up, uh, I've made a copy um, of, of, the, um, of the file in, in uh, Capture One. That's one of the things you can do is you make a copy of the original file and you can work on the original file and then compare to the compare to or work on the copy compared to the original file if you wanted to. And I mentioned it's really easy to get rid of and it was extremely easy to get rid of. So let's dive into here. Now this is um, one of the shots from Mavic Air 2 from last night and you'll notice it does have the vignette in it. Is it noticeable? Yes, absolutely. Um, would a lot of people notice it in a situation like this? Probably not because it's sort of brighter in the middle anyway. Um, but if you go and here's here's all like I said, totally nothing nothing changed out of the um, out of the, the corner here or out of the um, out of the box. But here it is. I made the copy and I set up. I bumped up the highlights or actually bumped down the highlights. I bumped down the exposure. Remember you said when you when you get rid of that that uh, vignette, it actually just brightens the edges rather than darkens the center. And here's how much I had to put a 1.2 vignette in the capture one. Um, I'm not sure what it would be uh, in the um, with Lightroom, but it's actually pretty good. So I bumped up, I brought up the shadow, I brought up, I brought down the highlight, I bumped back the whites back up again, um, and then I brought the blacks back down again. And if you, you know, the difference between black and shadow is 5% versus 20 and blah, blah, blah. You can look into that if you want or take my course. Um, so again, here it is just out of the camera and here it is just even back out again. And actually, if you do it real quick, it all of a sudden looks like the center's dark in this one, but it's not. It's just your eye playing tricks on you. Once you leave it there for a bit, um, you're good to go. So that's what this is. Um, I'm excited about the drone. I'm not going to keep it. The only reason I'm not going to keep it, um, well, I'll go into the, I'll go into the, I'll go into the review. I'll go into the um, conclusion here uh, as soon as I'm done with this part of it. But um, I am very amazed at the night capabilities of this, not only in 12 uh, megapixel, but the 48 megapixel as well. Um, it's a surprising little drone and a surprisingly stable drone consider it does not have the redundancies of the Mavic 2 uh, Pro. So um, there's my thoughts on night. That's my thoughts on shooting um, 
at dusk anyway, as you noticed, I was done two minutes before technical light, uh, night last night, so I was sweating that one. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. But anyway, um, that's my conclu that's, that's my thoughts on the photography. So let's talk about the full conclusion of this drone. I've hinted at it a little bit, um, but let's just dive right into it. Where does this leave us? Um, I'll be honest, I was not expecting much from this thing. I wasn't expecting it to be garbage, obviously. Um, you know, I, I have the Mini, I know what the Mini can do, so I assumed this would be that much better, and it, and it was that much better. Um, but it did exceed my expectations. It was interesting in that um, I did not expect the 48 megapixel to be as good as it was. Um, and it was not as good as I thought it could be in certain areas. I know that might sound like a little bit of a weirdness, but it's not. Um, I'm guessing that with the 48, mil uh, 48 millimeter, 48 megapixel system, you need the contrast of either daylight or night or something like that to really kind of make it pop. And if you're going to pixel peep, which means you're going to look at it 100% on a computer or come up to it at a, at a wall or something while it's hanging, you will be disappointed in the 48 megapixel. But it's, it's for the average user out there, for the new person out there, um, I think this is a fun drone to learn on. Uh, maybe even use in some of the smaller applications, lower budget applications out there. You know, you don't want to pull out your Mavic 2 Pro or your Enterprise 2 or whatever you're flying. Um, for, it, for all situations, I think this would be a really good one to start out with, to learn with, and even to keep um, as a backup. Um, once you do get, maybe if you get into the Mavic, uh, Mavic 2 Pro system or the Mavic 3, whatever comes out next. Um, but overall, I would say if you buy this um, for fun, for yourself, um, for smaller jobs, if real estate, blah, 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 I do not think you'll be disappointed at the 12 megapixel system. And that's the photography side of things. The video side of things, I'm not even going to touch. Um, there have been plenty of those out there, uh, and some of them are good, some of them are not. But um, for video, I guess, I don't know, that, that's up to you or up to another reviewer. But for the photography side of things, the 12 megapixel is definitely a good 12 megapixel system. Um, I'm not sure how much longer uh, the 12 megapixel will be viable. Uh, it's definitely not viable in the, in the uh, um, inspection side of things. But for the photography side of things, the lower end, end stuff, for a thousand bucks, I mean, hello, um, you get all of this, basically. And um, I like it. I, I, I wholeheartedly recommend getting this if you understand it's not going to be the drone to end all drones. It's not a 20 megapixel system. The 48 megapixel system is not a good system for some situations. Um, if I'm processing out my raw 20 megapixel Mavic 2 Pro, um, Mavic Pro 2, Mavic 2 Pro, sorry, too many numbers and letters <laughs> running around in my head right now. Um, it's, a be it's even better than the, than the 48 megapixel, but it's a good system, and it works. The digital, the uh, the the um, negative, the uh, digital negative. So the the uh, raw file that comes out of this thing is an eminently fixable, eminently editable file. So that's my conclusion. I really like the drone. Uh, I'm not keeping this uh, just simply because if I've got a drone, I need it to be in the air making any money. And it's not just going to sit on my desk, uh, sit on my shelf collecting dust. And this would, well, the case would would collect dust, not the drone itself. So. Um, that's my conclusion. Enjoy it. Um, do not call me about this one because by the time this hits the air, this will be gone. So I have uh, I, I have people I think might want to enjoy this as much as I did. Um, and that's that. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you got um, a little bit more comfortable with the idea of buying one of these things for photography. And um, I hope I helped in that aspect. So this has been Vic Moss with Drone You, and have a great day. Fly safe. Fly often and have fun. Bye-bye.